اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ ٹوڈے وی ول کنٹینیو تھرس وچ از ان ایکسٹریکٹ ٹیکن فرام محمد اسد بک روڈ ٹو مکہ اینڈ دس از پارٹ 1 بی ان دا لاسٹ پارٹ وی وی ریڈ دیٹ محمد اسد اینڈ زید وور ٹریولنگ تھرو دا ریڈ ڈیزرٹ نفوز ان سعودی عربیا ٹو گو ٹو تیما اینڈ وزٹ دا ویل and on his way Zaid tried to catch a hare when he spray, fell down and sprained his foot. All through the night Zaid seems to be restless with pain. He awakens long before dawn and his sudden movement stirs me also from my uneasy sleep. I see only one camel, he says, and when we look around we discover that one of the beasts, Zaid, has indeed disappeared. Zaid wants to set out on mine to search for it but his injured foot makes it difficult for him even to stand not to speak of walking and mounting and dismounting because his foot was injured Zaid could not get on the animal and get off it so Muhammad Asad offers him to rest and he suggests that he should go and search for the camel and he think, thinks that searching for the camel would not be very difficult because he will follow the tracks made by the camel and then come back retracing his own tracks. Thou rest, Zad, and I shall go instead. It won't be difficult to find my way back by retracing my own tracks. And in the breaking dawn, I ride away, following the tracks of the lost dromedary which wind across the sand valley and disappear behind the dunes. I ride for one hour and another and a third but the tracks of the strayed animal go on and on as if it had pursued a deliberate course so muhammad asad is saying that it seemed as if the camel had some destination in mind and was consciously following the route the forenoon is well advanced when i stop for a short halt dismount eat a few dates and drink from the small water skin attached to my saddle the picture of the water skin is given on the right the sun stands high but somehow it lost its glare so it was becoming dull dun colored clouds that is dull grayish brown colored clouds unusual at this time of year float motionless under the sky a strangely thick heavy air envelops the desert and softens the outlines of the dunes beyond their usual softness. An eerie stir over the summit of the high sand hill in front of me catches my eye. So what does he see? He, see, he sees a strange frightening movement in the dune. Is it an animal? The lost camel perhaps? But when I look more carefully, I see that the movement is not above, but in the dune crest itself. The crest is moving, ever so slightly rippling forward, and then it seems to trickle down the slope towards me like the crest of a slowly breaking wave. So he explains the wave-like movement of the sand caused by the wind. A murky sadness creeps up the sky from behind the dune. Under this redness, its contours lose their sharpness and become blurred, as if a veil had suddenly been drawn across. And a reddish twilight begins to spread rapidly over the desert. The picture of the twilight is given on the right. So these are the changes that are taking place because of the wind and the clouds that you see in the sky. A cloud of sand whirls against my face and around me and all at once the wind begins to roar from all directions crisscrossing the valley with powerful blasts the trickling movement of the first hilltop has been taken up by all the sand hills within sight in a matter of minutes the sky darkens to a deep rust brown hue and the air is filled with swirling sand dust which like reddish fog obscures the sun and the day this is a sandstorm and no mistake 
my crouching dromedary terrified wants to rise so the dromedary is also extremely terrified because of the sandstorm i pull it down by the halter struggling to keep myself upright in the wind that has now assumed the force of a gale and managed to hobble the animal's forelegs and to make it more secure a hind leg as well then i follow myself throw myself down on the ground and draw my abaya over my head i press my face against the camel's armpit so as not to be choked by the flying sand i feel the animal press its muzzle against my shoulder no doubt for the same reason i can feel the sand being heaped upon me from the side where i'm unprotected by the dromedary's body and have to shift from time to time to avoid being buried so he made his animal sit down and he sat down uh, with the animal and covered his mouth and face and ears with the abaya and pressed his face against the camel's armpit to protect himself from, from being choked and the animal was doing the same to protect itself from being choked and in the picture you can see the hobble and you can also see the halter and this projected part of the animal with the nose and the mouth is called the muzzle or snout I'm not unduly worried for it is not the first time that I have been surprised by a sandstorm in the desert lying thus on the ground tightly wrapped in my abaya I can do nothing but wait for the storm to abate and listen to the roar of the wind and the flapping of my cloak flapping like a loose sail no like a banner in the wind I abandoned myself to the hour and the whir and the rush and the roar with a wild happiness in my heart and the wind that rushed past my face sang out never again will thou be a stranger never again among thy people i'm no longer a stranger arabia has become my home my western past is like a distant dream not unreal enough to be forgotten and not real enough to be part of my present Jazakallah that's all for today see you next time allah hafiz